I have a very embarrassing confession to make. For the last five years, I've been carbon neutral. Like many of you here in the audience, I feel very passionate about the climate. And so although I love eating meat, I've been trying to eat a little bit less. I've been trying to take less flights. And in the end of the year, I calculate how much CO2 I have emitted, and I support projects around the world that remove just as much CO2 from the air. And that's possible through something that's called carbon offsets. It's actually a pretty cool system. One carbon offset represents one ton of, so one ton of CO2 that's being removed somewhere around the world. And when I buy carbon offsets, it means that I can become carbon neutral, and that money goes towards organizations, people that are, for example, planting new trees, that are protecting forests against deforestation. Because when trees grow, they absorb CO2 out of the air, and they turn it into wood. It allows for people like Pedro, a guy I met in Brazil, who can barely make ends meet, who has to resort to cutting down his forest to feed his family, to now, all of a sudden, he has an alternative. All of a sudden, because of carbon offsets that he can sell, he has an economic incentive not to cut down his trees, to grow new trees, which is not only great for Pedro, or for the climate in general, it also increases biodiversity. It mitigates climate risk. It reduces drought. It has more and more benefits than just only for the climate in general. So it's a pretty great system, right? All apart from just one minor detail. It is all one big scam. It's all fake. A recent report showed that 90% of the carbon offsets from the leading provider of carbon offsets in the world, 90% are completely fake. They either didn't remove anything close to what was promised, or they just didn't have any impact on the environment whatsoever. And that is honestly very embarrassing for people like me. I've been telling everybody I'm carbon neutral. I might have been carbon shaming all my friends for not offsetting their flights. It's also very embarrassing for large companies like Disney, Delta, Microsoft, that have been spending billions and billions of dollars on these carbon offsets, do now all of a sudden realize, well, it hasn't made any impact whatsoever. In fact, one might even say that it's made the problem even worse. Because when I think, when I believe that I am carbon neutral, all of a sudden, that extra stake well, it looks very tempting. I can just offset it afterwards. So one might even say that it has made the problem even worse. So if there is one thing you take away from this talk, it should be this. Please stop buying any carbon offset. We should stop giving any money to this system of carbon offsets before we make the world even worse. Should we? Because make no mistake, we need to remove carbon. If there's one thing that scientists all around the world agree on, is that we need to remove as much CO2 as possible, as fast as possible. This is a problem that is unprecedented, both of in, in terms of its scale as well as its urgency. Unprecedented than like anything we've ever experienced as a human species. And so financially incentivizing people to do so, to remove CO2, well, it might just be our best, it might just be our only shot we've got. We don't have an option, we've got to make this work. We've got to make this work. So how do we make it work? And the solution will have to have an answer to two competing forces. And those are trust and scale. Trust and scale. One, trust. Carbon offsets can only work if we can absolutely trust that they're actually removing carbon. If we can be 100% certain 
that every dollar, every euro that we spent on these carbon offset effectively goes towards removing CO2 from the air. CO2 that otherwise, without this project, would still be in the air, but that now, because of these carbon offsets, is being captured and is being stored away for a long, long time. We've got to be absolutely certain how much these carbon offsets actually remove. No more, no less. So that's trust to scale. This can only work if we can scale it to every corner of this planet. If the only way to get to that level of trust is to spend millions of dollars on a small project, it's never going to work. We need a solution that is affordable enough and readily available enough so that we can scale it around the globe. So trust and scale. Now let me tell you how it currently works. Currently, if you want to know how much CO2 is in a forest, we send a team of biologists into that forest with a very cool new technology, actually right here into my pocket. It looks something like this. It's a tape measure. For real, this is a technology that we're using to measure carbon. Scientists literally go into a forest, go measure around the trunk of every single tree to try to get the width of the tree. They try to estimate the height. And based on those two numbers, they try to get to an estimate of the volume of the tree. And you don't just do that once. You do that every single year. Only when I measure the volume right now of a tree, and then again a year later, I can tell how much this tree has grown or how much CO2 this tree has captured. So for one, this technology is not very accurate. But secondly, because it requires so much labor, it is extremely expensive. And that means that we have to resort to just selecting a couple trees in an entire forest to form an opinion, to make decisions about what's happening, let alone that we'd even be able to look at what's happening around this forest, to compare what's happening to this project to what's happening around it, to see the real impact of a carbon offset project. It's just too expensive. But we've got to make it work. How on earth have we come to a point where this is a technology that we're relying on to save the planet? It can come to no surprise that a carbon offset system that was built on this technology it can come at no surprise that it was doomed to fail from the start. So how do we solve it? Well, the answer might be just right above your heads. Satellites. Satellites have been flying around the Earth for years now. They've been taking high-resolution images of everything, including our forests. But until now, we haven't been able to do much with them, because at first glance, they just show a couple pixels of the top of tree crowns. However, with the newest developments in technology, and this is something that we are working on at GenVision, it is now possible to create something that is called a digital twin. A digital twin is just like a real twin in the fact that it looks very similar, it acts in a similar way. Well, it's digital, of course. And so for a forest, that means that we have a 3D model of every single tree in an entire forest. And we can look at it, we can analyze, what's going to happen, and we can predict how that's going to change. And the way we can create these digital twins is by stitching together different satellite images from different angles so that we can get a 3D view of a forest. And with the latest artificial intelligence, we can now recognize what tree species are we looking at. And we can simulate how those trees grow in 3D until that matches up with reality perfectly. All of a sudden, that opens up a bunch of new opportunities. They're super exciting. For one, well, all of a sudden, we can very accurately measure for every individual tree how much carbon we're actually storing. And we can not only do that for the current year. With historical images, we can look into the past, 
and we can look how that's going to change years down the line. But secondly, this is so much more affordable. It means that now we don't have to rely on just a couple trees in a forest. We can look at large regions at once, and we can analyze what the difference is between a carbon offset project and a project that was not supported by it to measure the real impact. Some really cool technology. But make no mistake, this does not solve the climate crisis. Simply does not. It should be our first priorities at all time to keep reducing our emissions. It should be our first priority. And even then, there are still many questions that remain unanswered, many problems that remain unsolved. For example, we've got to make sure that these carbon offsets don't just become a get-out-of-jail-for-free card for large companies who just keep on polluting the earth. We've got to solve that. We've got to make that work. We have no option. And so we need all the help we can. The world needs your help to fix this, to create a system that we can trust and that we can scale. But with these new technologies and when all of that comes together, it makes me actually very excited. I'm very optimistic about where we're heading. And I truly believe that when we're approaching this climate crisis, chin up, head on, against all odds, we just might make it work. Thank you.